love is not so get something. They'll tell you now if you ask your dad to get something. So leave your mummy's laughing arms, there's no way you can win. You're victim of your vocal charm, so get something. The rats got two years of your life, now isn't that a sin? There's only one way to get out, and that's to get some in. Bloody good, isn't it, eh? First day off of morgue duty and they put us in a psychiatric ward. I could end up in here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look what their half's done to me. They've taken away my kilt, my country, my wife, my dignity. Do you want to hop into bed now, Bruce? I know what I mean. It's funny, cos I thought they'd look a lot loonier than this, you know. I expect them all to be sitting up in bed with, um, Napoleon hats on and that. <laughs> no, no, the real chain clankers and restraint harness people are hidden away. These are just the mild cases. They're quite young on the old really, aren't they? Aye. Aye, well, most of them would be national servicemen. Stands to reason. Yeah, right. Let's get on with it. Ice cream, snow fruits. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be round tomorrow. Can I get you anything, mate? Yes. I'd like some wool, please. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, any particular colour? <laughs> yes. Red. Please. Red, Bruce, red, 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 red. There you are, mate. All right. Thank you very much. Not much wrong with him, is there? <laughs> uh, what you need, then, Chief? Double deck of bus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> hey, Chief. What? We know that fella, don't we? Do we? Who is he? He was at Skelton Basic Training. He used to work in the sick quarters. Uh, Flanky. No, Bank... Rankin! That's his name. He wanted to be a bandsman. Of course he did, yeah. Uh, hello, Rankin. How you doing, then? I want to be a bandsman. <laughs> Not got a lot to say to himself, has he? It's a fixation. He's suffering from a fixation. I wonder what the cure is. Well, they reckon in the Reader's Digest that they've got this new thing now. Yeah, what's that? Well, as I understand it, what they do evidently is cut the top of the skull off and expose the brain. You're joking? <laughs> no, no, honest. Then they sort of ferret it around and locate the part that, you know, giving the fella the fixation. Oh, the parts are labelled then? <laughs> no. Anyway, they find the part in Rankin's case, the part that says he wants to be a bandsman. Yes. Then they get this, uh, this sort of blowtorch thing. <laughs> and, uh, they burn out that part of the brain. No. Yeah! Yeah? yeah. No! Rankin! Rankin! Quick, Bruce! <laughs> Rankin. Come on, Rankin, open the door. Nobody's gonna cut the top of your head off. Bruce doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I read it in the Reader's Digest. Well, uh, you got it wrong. Oh, come on, Rankin. You don't want to sit in there all day. <laughs> Here, Rankin. There's college pudding and custard for tea. <laughs> I'm going to have a bet with you, Jakey. I bet you half a crown that Rankin can't get back into bed by the time I count to three. All right, I'll bet he can't. No, you have to say, I bet he can. No, but you did say to me, I bet he can't. I, I did? Yeah. Do it again. Try right. again. <laughs> yes, well, uh, is it a bet, then? I bet you that Rankin can get back into bed by the time I count to three. All right, I'll bet he can't. I bet he can. One, two, three. <laughs> Perhaps they don't cut the entire top of the skull off. Bruce! <laughs> Look, Rankin, old Sanna, this is Richardson speaking again. You know, Ken. <laughs> I'm trying the old personal trust technique. Look, um, Rankin, forget all the others. What say that you and I just hop back into bed, eh? You will keep saying these things, won't you, eh? Shut up. <laughs> hey, Rankin. Hey? Rankin, this is Jakey speaking. 
What the devil is going on here? Um, it's Rankin, sir. He's locked himself in the lavatory. Why? I uh, couldn't tell you, sir. He just did. I see. <laughs> All right. Stand aside. <clears throat> Rankin, uh, this is your commanding officer here, huh? Out you come. Ah. Sir, could I try something? I've got an idea. Something subtle, I suppose, like calling up a bomber? Possibly a lank? Uh... <laughs> no, sir. No, no, no. Look, I think I can get him out. What? Oh, you do, do you? Yes, sir. All right, proceed. <laughs> right. Royal Air Force Band, fall in. Right. Ready to march off. Band by the centre. Just a minute. Bandsman Rankin is missing. Oh, so he is. Has anyone seen Rankin? I can't imagine where he could be. Where's Bandsman Rankin? Oh, here he is. Wait, Rankin, before that, come on. Come on, jolly just... good former. Google. That's it. Band, the Royal Air Force march past. Band, left, turn. <laughs> By the centre, quick, march. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Officers rounds, those lying lie to, those sitting sit to, remain to stand to, attention! <laughs> Lunatics ready for your inspection, sir. <laughs> Psychiatric cases, Corporal Marsh, if you please. I stand corrected, sir. All right, gentlemen, let's take a look. Ah, <coughs> oh, Fiddick. How's the bus coming along? Very well, thank you, sir. <laughs> well done. Jolly good, yes. Yeah, we'll keep him on the tranquilizers, I think. <laughs> yes, and how are we today? Oh, I see. All right, carry on. Uh, this is Rankin. He's the chap who locked himself in the toilet the other day. I think we've got an EEG arranged, haven't we? Oh, yes, good. Yes, that reminds me, um, Richardson, Lily. Yes, sir? Yes, sir? Uh, Rankin here is due for an EEG this afternoon. Now, that will happen in the annex, and as that's in the town, I want you to escort the patient there and back, all right? Yes, sir. Yes, I must say I was quite taken with your handling of Rankin in the toilet the other day. <laughs> He's obviously the man for the job. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir, thank you very much, sir. Something upsetting you, Marsh? Me, sir? No, sir. <laughs> Come now, there is. What no, is it? No, it's fine, sir. If you choose on the one hand to tell me that I am your administrative bulldog and then choose on the other hand not to send me a memo about something like this, it is not for me to say anything about it, sir. But you're in on this, Corporal. Of course you are. I want you to take charge of the party. Oh, sir. And I want you to draw a car from the motor pool and supervise the whole thing. You're not just saying that because you didn't send me a memo, are you, sir? Of course not. Now, listen, Marsh. If a mentally unstable patient is going to be taken out of the confines of this hospital, I'm going to be jolly sure that he's in trustworthy hands. Yours. Oh, you know how to make somebody emotional, don't you, sir? <laughs> Good man. Uh, do you hear that, Rankin? We're going to send you down to the annex this afternoon for a little test uh, to make you feel better. Uh, what have you got to say that, eh? I want to be a bandsman. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call driving, that is. But, but, Corporal, we're not supposed to stop anywhere. The group captain said straight there and straight back. I fancy a snack. All right, puff ass. <laughs> oh. mm. uh. It's like desperate Dan eating a cow pie, isn't it? <laughs> what? Look, Corporal, I really think we ought to be making a move. All right. Pass the tomato sauce. <laughs> Lovely. Will you be taking dessert, Corporal? No. But I'll be having some art dessert. <laughs> Shouldn't our first concern be for our patient? No. 
He's mad. He don't deserve any. Now, look here, Corporal. This isn't the Dark Ages, you know. People are taking a much more enlightened view these days of people wanting to be bandsmen. Give us your hand. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> what a beastly thing to do. No, I thought it was funny. <laughs> oh, you didn't really, Corporal. Eh? Oh, no. No, no, no. You see, since I've been working on the psychiatric ward, I've realised that displays of aggression are really only just cries for help. Oh, yeah. Yes. You see, you wouldn't get any satisfaction out of potato throwing if I was to take the aggression out of your action by simply extending my hand like that and saying, go on, go ahead. If you want to throw potato in my hand, then throw potato in my hand. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's even funnier. <laughs> I'll have to reread that bit. Sausage and mess, Bruce. Yeah, do. Right. Sausage and mess, Chief. But, oh, God, let's go somewhere else. All right, all right, come back here, you two. Are you bunking out of camp? No, Corporal, we're off duty. We just thought we'd come down for some real food. Well, there ain't any sausages. <laughs> no, they're all on your plate. Watch it, Edward the Seventh. <laughs> Where are you taking him, kid? To the annex for an EEG. <clears throat> After we've had our little snack. Hold your hand out. Oh, no, please. Well, mind your manners, then. When you've been through what I've been through, you learn to eat whenever there's food available. Now, when I was winning my medal up in Labrador... Oh, no. I come back here, you two. Sit down. I'm talking. Now, when I was up in Labrador winning my medal, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but the third night out from base camp, we were attacked by wolves. Was attacked by wolves. Now, what do you think the first thing was that I did? Singled out the leader. I singled out the leader. <laughs> Why, you ask? Why? I'll tell you. You want to listen to this ranking? Learn something about sanity. Uh, where was I? Well, you just singled out the leader, attacked him with your bare hands and threw him the rest of the pack. Oh, yeah. Why, you ask? Are we done Why, you ask? Why? I'll tell you. Because the rest of the pack were so preoccupied with knocking their leader, it gave me a chance to slip away through the bushes. Silver birches. Eh? You said silver birches last night. Listen, only Joe, will you stop correcting me? I'm the one that done the errors, and I ought to know what happened. <laughs> Look, I don't keep telling you this story to show off. My medal does my showing off for me. I am just trying to be educational to you, to show you the proper way people in the Royal Air Force should be able. I am trying to show you that there are more ways of serving your country than farting about with madmen. We're not fart messing about with madmen. <laughs> Rankin has a temporary psychic dislocation. It's very important that we get... Where's he gone? <laughs> sort of bands you want to be in? Any band. I don't mind. Look, Rankin, I was in the boys' brigade, and I have to say that their idea of harmony is hazy, to say the least. But it's a band. Look, so are Sid Millwood and the Nitwits. But you don't want to be in that. You want to be in the Royal Air Force band. Look, count three. If you don't come by then, hit him with your belt buckle. And that is your considered medical opinion, is it, Corporal? I don't need opinions. I've got stripes. Come along, Rankin. Come on, come on, come on, come on Rankin. Yeah. There you are, you see, Corporal, he's coming along quite nicely without us having to resort to violence at all. No! Oh, yeah, very nicely. Oh, look at that. A Selma and Lincoln B-flat tenor with a conical mouthpiece. What's Bombhead raving on about now? 
Well, it's a trombone court, but we likes a trombone. I like Eddie Lamar, but I don't stop and look every time I see her in a shop window. Uh, how many times have you seen Eddie Lamar in a shop window, then? Don't be illiterate, you bagpiping little runt. Get the loony in the car. <laughs> Come on, Rankin. I'll tell you what, Rankin. Let's get your Rankin. Let's get your EEC over, and then perhaps we can go into the park and listen to the band. Will they play green sleeves? Of course they will. Of course they will. Come on in, Bruce. Me and you might as well be pushing off. Yeah. No, you can't. I'm putting you back on duty. Why? Because Puff House and Only Joe have got muscles like pimples. If this loony tries to strangle me while I'm driving along, I'll need the four of you to hold him down. But I only wanted to be a bandsman. <laughs> Shut up. <coughs> After the grizzly bear, things went a bit dead. I only had to carry the unconscious officer 20 miles through 50-foot snowdrifts. Are you listening to me? Yeah, well, I'm just waiting for the bit where you held back the glacier with one hand. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. Yeah, I thought you might be. Anyway, the next thing... Officer present, party on your feet, party stand to attention. Party, all present and correct, sir. Thank you very much, Corporal. After a two-hour therapy session with a paranoid bomb aimer, that's just what I needed. Oh, not at all, sir. My pleasure, sir. I've got your man Rankin wired up. Perhaps you'd like to come in and watch me scan him. Oh, I'd love to, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Well, not you. You're not a medic. But I am IC party, sir. Then sit in the corner and blow up some balloons. <laughs> Have you ever seen EEG before? No, sir, but we'd be very interested to. Ditto, sir. Don't cheat the officer. There's no point in showing them, sir. They don't even know what an EEG is. And you do, I suppose? As it happens, I do. It is an electrical machine, isn't it? Yes. And you clamp it to the patient's head and shoot 16,000 volts through his brain in order to teach him not to be mad. <laughs> Sit down and keep totally silent until you leave this building. Come on, chaps. You're on a charge. <laughs> the important thing to remember is that this is an essentially a diagnostic technique. Now, it won't cure the patient, but the divergence of these needles from the known norm may help us to know where to begin any subsequent analysis. I'd love a photograph of me standing by that machine. My mum could put it on the mantelpiece. I wonder could this machine help with animals at all? Because, you see, sir, my spaniel Willie gets terribly moody at times <laughs> for no apparent reason. Do you think we can get on? Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Right. Nothing to worry about, Rankin. Just relax. Now, close your eyes. You see, that's quite normal. Absence of visual stimuli. Good, good. Now let's start thinking about food. Imagine an ox roasting over a fire. Good, nothing wrong there. And now let's try the old favorite, sex. Rankin, I want you to imagine a naked woman. <laughs> Very well, a naked woman lying on a bed. Possibly on black satin sheets. Possibly the curves of her voluptuous <laughs> body writhing, as it were. Uh, possibly she's moaning in some sort of ecstasy. And then possibly I, uh, you, uh, come into the room and possibly she pulls me down onto the bed and then possibly I... It's, uh, it's I, no good. It's no good. It's the same as before. Oh. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> Just a minute. <sighs> That's better. Uh, well, um, a bit of a mystery, this one. Uh, sir, so we have been working quite close to Rankin for the last few days. I think we could get you something on there. All right, carry on. Right, um, cones, Matthew. Oh. Lovely, there you are. Just a minute, sir. You know what to do next? Yes. Ready? Three, four. Come on now, Corporal, you don't need us anymore. Can we go? No, you can't. 
By the time they finish twiddling with Rankin's knobs, he'll come out of there madder than when he went in. <laughs> Calls himself the doctor, that great long streak of... Oh, hello, sir. May I be of any medical assistance? Yes, you can give this to your commanding officer. It's my report on Rankin. Oh. And it's sealed, in case you were thinking of adding any notes of your own. Well, that's about it, lads. And very well done. Oh, I actually got something right, did I, sir? Quite a lot. And you could uh, do a good job for yourself by taking a leaf out of their book. Might stop you being the innate thug. You obviously are. Oh, but you've only known me five minutes, sir. Quite long enough. Off you go, lads, and jolly well done. Thank you, sir. It was a most instructive afternoon, sir. It was a most instructive afternoon, sir. You aperture crawling little insects. Come on, let's get out of this dump. Come on, Rankin, son. Get your skates on. <coughs> no, yes. No, look. You've got to come home with us, Rankin. We're going home now. I want the officer to come back here and tell me I'm going to become a... Bandsman. Right, that's enough of this trick cyclist mumbo jumbo. You can forget about all these amateur Sigmund Rombergs. Now, you listen to me, Rankin. I am going to tell you something. You are never going to be a bandsman, but you are still in the Royal Air Force. And if you don't do as I tell you, you will end up as a pile of smoking asses. <laughs> you see, now that is the way to treat an upcase. You just have to be firm with it. Him. Oh, heavens! Oh, what's he done? I'm a guest, Corporal. He nearly frightened the poor little devil to death. Of course I didn't. Go blow me. I was only having a little joke with him. Oh, well, he didn't get it, did he? Eh? Look, you don't want to stay out there. Come on in, Rankin, eh? No! Oh! No, look what you've done. No, it wasn't me. It, it's you, you dopey medics. It's your fault. You are responsible. Oh, no, you're in charge of the party, Corporal. You made sure of that with the group captain. In your hands, he said. Now, if you turned up with just the remains of, sank, of Rankin in a sack, I think you might have something to say. Oh, oh, look, Kenny. Oh. Matthew. Brucey? <laughs> uh, Jacob. Oh, now, forget the frayed tempers. I mean, basically, we are all mates, aren't we? No. Oh. <laughs> well, come on. Look, help me. Somebody, please, get him in. All right, let me have a try. Here's an interesting thing, Rankin. I don't know whether you embrace any form of monotheism, or, or indeed polytheism, or whether you work upon a totally humanistic basis, but I think it is worth considering, I think you'll agree with me there, the transcendental aspect of any of these three. I mean, take, for instance, the central concept of Meister Eckhart. Matthew! He doesn't know what you're talking about. I was coming to it. Yeah, well, we haven't got that long. No, he, need, he needs a more down-to-earth approach. Hello, Rankin, it's Lecky. Hello, Lecky. Hello, Rankin. Look, I understand how you feel out there. You've been in the RAF goodness knows how long. You're miles away from your family and friends. You're possibly married. And they've posted your wife to Malta. Like they've done with mine. You want to be a bandsman, but they won't let you. You're shoved about from pillar to post. Nobody really cares if you're upset or not. You're... Yeah, I'm not sure. He might have a point out there. Bruce! <laughs> Lighter. Lighter. Oh, I've got some matches. A lighter approach, I meant. Like this. <laughs> Lovely day, Rankin. No, it isn't. Oh, I think it is. Look, Rankin, if you come in, I'll eat your tapioca for you tonight. But I want to be a bandsman. <laughs> he wants to be a bandsman. We know that, don't we? Well, you think of something then. All right. If he insists on suicide, threaten to kill him. Oh. <laughs> no! <laughs> Look. I think we should go to a higher authority. What, pre-evening? No, 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 fetch the officer. No, we don't want no officers. No, look, I've got an idea. What? It'll cost you 32 and 6. Right, divvy up, lad. No, it'll cost you 32 and 6. Oh, this had better be good, Ted. Would I lie? Yes. Can you take the chance? No. Right. <laughs> Keep him talking, I'll be back in half hour. Right. Come on. Well, it worked. 32 and 6, well spent. <laughs> Go on, Rankin, old son. Go on, there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheer up, Corp. There's only five miles to go. It's time for National Service National Oh, my God. 
Rose from the back of the that you were dead. The rap for two years of your life now is about to pin. There's only one way to get out, and that's the